I'm at Hometown Rising with Hannah Ellis. Ellis, you, Hannah, you just got off the stage. I how, did. How was it? Oh, it was incredible. Truly, like the fans today are like top notch, singing all the words, giving me all of the feels. Well, you're a Kentuckian, so I am. You, know, you brought some people here just for you. Mm-hmm, I did. I have a lot of people um, from my hometown in Campbellsville that came up today. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know someone else from Campbellsville. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, someone who works with works with me, uh, Jessica Atkins. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. so funny. Yeah, we actually went to high school together. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, guys, she's actually world. She's actually here somewhere. Oh my gosh, I have to find her. That's yeah. incredible. I did not know that. So that I, then I know you're 21. I was about to yeah. ask you if you were 21 because oh what I do is Thank we do you. like we do bourbon stuff. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I thought you were 18. Um, please tell everybody that yeah. you know, except for the <laughs> alcohol people that I am. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I heard I've heard nothing but great things about your music. I unfortunately I could not see you yeah. on the stage. I got pulled away. All good. But what would what what did it feel like to be up there performing in Kentucky? The energy today is just truly through the roof um and it was just really special a to see so many people singing the words back that will never ever get old to me yeah and i don't know it was one of those days it just felt like the band was on and i felt on and the crowd was good it it was it was just one of those those shows if you will nice so what what i like to do on this show is i like to pair to people's palettes love so and i like to ask questions and uh get get a bourbon that i think would be you know catered toward what you like to yeah. taste and as you can see i've got a few there you do i love re- that ready to rock and roll i love it uh, majority from kentucky but we have some other states in there as mm-hmm. well so tell me um what's your favorite food what do you like to eat oh so i'm actually like a pretty big foodie so okay. like i've all the food basically but i have been i was just in the northeast and we did a lot a lot of seafood up there i love oysters um but i love pizza pizza is my number one food i don't know oh, if that's what, what's is, your favorite part of the pizza is it the cheese is it the bread is it the oh, tomato sauce you know let's see hmm probably like pepperonis i really love the okay. flavor of that and i love a charcuterie board so any kind of mm-hmm. prosciutto pepperoni so you like savories yes yeah okay, i do like so savories. you're someone who really likes savory so when we look into like uh, the flavors of what bourbon is bourbon tends to skew toward sweet mm-hmm. and that's because of the new charred oak barrel it really has a big impact on the flavor right and uh the caramelization from that barrel Gilds a lot of like caramel, vanillas, a lot yeah. of sugary sweet notes, and um, the savor on the savory side, they're out there, mm-hmm. but they're like a little bit more, a little bit more on like the cornbread side, maybe like a barbecue, got it, uh, potato chip or yeah. something like that. And um, so now, then I've got you've you know honed in on kind of like your style of food, which you yeah. like. Uh, let's let's figure out what kind of savory. Yeah. You like specifically. So when it comes to potato chips, Oof. what kind of potato chips are you getting? Salty. Just plain Lay's. I could just eat them by the bags. Okay. And do you like bananas? I do like bananas, yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like bananas? Um, I like banana-flavored cocktails. <laughs> That's a good answer. I am actually, um, you know, for... For those listening, this might come as a shock, but I'm actually going to recommend a Jack Daniels product to you. Really? Based on uh, the saltiness, and you and you do like yeah. So the Jack Daniels will be right there uh, in the. There you go. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, nice catch, did you, did guys. I could have did you hear, very poorly. <laughs> did you hear me say throw it? I, uh, <laughs> I, I was not ready for that. I, was, I like how quickly he did it, though. I mean, I was about to scratch my nose, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little scared. I was like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> I mean, that was... This is beautiful, wow. though. Yeah, so this is a this is a Jack Daniels uh, barrel pick that I actually did um, to raise money for the Kentucky Brain Injury Alliance. Oh, that's awesome. Which, which, is, uh, which is a uh, nonprofit that I support. Oh, that's awesome. But... Jack Daniels is actually a bourbon, but they choose to call themselves Tennessee whiskey. If they wanted to call themselves bourbon, they could. Really? Yeah. That's really interesting. I didn't realize that. Well, you know, it's most of everything in this world is marketing, mm-hmm, and most marketing is bullshit. <laughs> and so, 
you know, they're they're um, it's easier to separate themselves in the market by calling themselves a Tennessee whiskey. Oh, I love that. There's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, we can go down the geek path all day long on that, but mm-hmm. uh, what it comes down to is like, does it taste good? Do you right, like it? Right. And let's see if it has those notes in there that we were talking about. Now, when you when you first you kind of want to familiar familiarize yourself with the whiskey, right? You swirl mm-hmm. it around a little bit, kind of look at it. And smell it. It is. I mean, maybe it's because we just said it, but it really does have like a hint of that banana on the nose. Yeah. And it, last time I checked, I don't have the ability to plant thoughts. <laughs> right, right. So, I know. I mean, if I have that skill, then I need to move on from uh, being but it a is. bourbon I mean, taster. it really does. That's really funny. Can you pick up anything else on the nose? Definitely a spice of some sort. Now, when you, you're smelling with your mouth open, so you've been trained in the art of tasting bourbon. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Okay, so some spice. Let's go to the taste. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, yeah. So definitely the banana, it literally tastes like a dessert. Yeah. That's incredible. But it's still got, like, something on the back. Yeah, so this has a a nice spice flavor profile, Mm -hmm. like, toward the back. And, um... I've always got a little saltiness in here, like from yeah. a, like a potato chip, yeah. which is why I why I picked this one for you. So it reminds me of a banana foster. Have you had that? Oh, I do love me some bananas it's foster. A really great yeah. dessert. Like literally, I want to have this and that and. So I, I <laughs> bananas fosters go straight to my hips. <laughs> you can, once a year though, right? Like yeah, you can I, you can sneak it in there. Uh, but if I thing is, I'll you know because I usually make it in those big like silver mm-hmm. trays, and like I'll like eat the whole damn tray. You know, so it can be bad. So I like to ask people in this part of the show. I like to ask people a little bit about their drinking past. Uh oh. Now you you go with this how you want, wherever you want to go. Okay. What was your first drink? Probably a margarita. That was like uh, because when I because actually I know nobody believes this, but it's true. I didn't really drink till I was twenty one. I'd like you know. Wow. A um, case study of responsibility. Yeah, here. I'm like weird rule follower girl but uh the first one i had was probably a margarita because that's what my dad would have on vacations and i was like yeah that looks like a lot of fun and it was (laughs) awesome yeah i love i still love a good margarita not too sugary but yeah and that so that tells me that if you still like it that means you didn't overindulge and no not on that one yeah (laughs) that came later (laughs) all right yeah what was what got you that came later um oh man so that's what's funny is i went to school at the university of kentucky and uh that's where you drink bourbon you, mm-hmm. it's like part of the criteria of attending school there so i actually uh had a breakup with bourbon after a few years in school and we had to have a little hiatus <laughs> okay it got me uh, a, a bottle of wild turkey did me in one time and that was it that was probably a year before i touched anything in wow. the brown liquor department again I was so like, wild I turkey took it. you down for a bit yeah even to this day i'm like oh <laughs> so i'm just going out on a limb here and saying wild turkey will not be sponsoring you for probably any shows. not probably not they're gonna be like oh not that girl <laughs> or maybe or maybe they will now like, oh, oh yeah, we're gonna show we're you gonna to, show you so you had to taste it right right exactly <laughs> non-college girl <laughs> so what where um what do you drink when you're on the road um, I do tend to go with tequila or, I mean, guys, I'm like a white girl in her 20s, so White Claws, right? Oh, good God. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I almost want, I, I mean. You almost it, want to take it away from me, I, don't you? I almost I want to be like, <laughs> why? <laughs> They're just like, it's like a alcoholic LaCroix, and I'm a LaCroix girl, you know? You know, it's one of those things, like. Those of us in the business who kind of track trends and everything, right. no one saw this coming. I said that yesterday. I was like, they've been out for years. Like, I don't know. I don't care. I'm glad that it's here. But no, it's very, very true. It's the best thing that I have read is that White Claw is a is a gender neutral marketing package. I, you know what? Maybe that is the case because I do see a lot of men drinking them. Whereas when the when the whole like what is it spiked seltzer yeah. kind of happened, everybody kind of was like, mm. and then all of a sudden everybody's drinking them. It's you know. 
and, equal and, opportunity you know and i think whiskey has that problem mm -hmm. you know like um i wrote a book called uh whiskey women oh, cool. and it was basically tracing the history of women and whiskey and That's there was awesome. um there was a lot of denial in the business of how much women actually influenced mm -hmm. the, the category. And um, it was fascinating to me, like how little brands knew and then how little they actually marketed to women. Right. And when they did market it to women, they did it all wrong. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Marketers still feel like they have to market to you as a woman. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, I appreciate that, their putting extra work in. Do, do you do you think um, we'll, we'll we'll take some big global issues here? Yeah. But from from a marketing perspective, do you ever get the feel that you know, like the market is oversaturated with trying to target, you know, the millennial millennial women? Are we just talking bourbon? Or are we just talking talking, talking shoes, anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just I'm very curious to, to know your thoughts on this. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure because I think it just depends on what you're passionate about and what you're looking for. I mean, honestly, though, I'm like, I went to school for marketing, so I feel like I kind of see it a little differently. Mm -hmm. And like, I see everybody's game versus I don't necessarily see it gender. Mm. And I'm not like, I just see it as like, but I, as you mentioned, and I do start to think if I said, okay, what's my favorite bourbon? Probably Maker's 46. Okay. But then when I think about that bottle, even just the bottle alone gives me like a feminine vibe. Was that intentional? I don't know. But like it does kind of just in my brain while you were kind of talking about marketing to females. But as far as do I feel like it's something I've noticed more of to where it's all geared towards younger mm -hmm. females? I don't know. I don't really know that I have picked up on that. By the way, uh, Maker's Mark's bottle and design uh -huh. was developed by a woman. Marjorie Samuels yes. in the 1950s. Which I love. So, yeah. And she, what, what did she do? The stamp, right? Was Or was it She did the, the red dripping wax yeah. and uh, the name and love. the hand-torn label. Um, you know, I, I think, I think too, is like, I'm finding it very difficult to find out what's real and what's marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the line has blurred so much mm -hmm. of things like um, social media. Oh, yeah, especially because of, and I love what they do and would honestly kind of be considered one with my job, but like influencers, because it's hard to separate. Well, I like this person and I believe their opinion, but they're also getting paid to have this opinion. So mm -hmm. is that truly a product they are using at night when they, are they really using that face wash before mm -hmm. they go to bed or... Is it truly just a brand partnership that makes sense with their brand? So I mean, I've I'm been, totally with you on I've that. actually been looking for a face wash. <laughs> you know, I any, love it. Any recommendations? Oh, man. I feel like I've tried so many. I mean, honestly, though, there's uh, one I've been using lately. It's called Clarity, and there's no added anything. So it doesn't really have a scent or anything. Yeah, that's but, good stuff. That's good. And that's usually a pretty good sign to me because they're like, sorry, we're not going to dress this up at all. This mm -hmm. is the product. Now, are, and they, it's are been you really a paid nice. spokesperson for You know, clarity? I'm not. I'm not. They like kind of, because uh, being an artist, a lot of times people will gift you mm -hmm. things. And it was a gift, but it wasn't, there was no strings attached to it. Okay. And so it was something that I've just been using a lot lately. Mm. Because I, like I said, I've used a lot of different ones. And that one, I feel like I've just. So now really I'm liked. envisioning you on one of these late night infomercials. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and you're like, uh, you've got the the face creams on right. and all that and you're like i use clarity the really the really fancy <laughs> face splash that yeah. all the celebrities do <laughs> trying to do that i'm trying to get involved <laughs> the, the whole influencer thing though it it is annoying mm -hmm. it's it's know, hard because it's like you know people just get something in their hand and they look over here they look over <laughs> there they look up and they're like gosh i love my handbag <laughs> yeah you you're know. not even looking at it <laughs> you know it's it's, it, it's very strange the the world we live in because mm -hmm. we don't we no longer really reward we're we're not rewarding like intelligence yeah in a lot yeah. of ways yeah we're just being told go over here and you're like oh, okay yeah <laughs> and I do feel like your generation can see through it it is starting to swing back I think a little yeah. bit a little bit it really is. But I also think your generation doesn't care. It's like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fine. You're an influencer, cool. Yeah, that Where's is Where's my true. white claw? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really tough to be a millennial here, okay? 
Oh, no. I would much rather be a millennial than in my situation. <laughs> oh, you guys, um, you know, I uh, I have, I, I like just, when I when I pick an outfit or something, I make sure that it, it's a millennial approved. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you, there's a lot of swag happening here. I was already yeah. commented on this <laughs> gorgeous little handkerchief. But what I've found with your generation is is that you get, you, know, you get typecasted, mm-hmm. you get stereotyped, and I have figured out the reason why. I'm ready. It, it's mostly coming from baby boomers. Yeah. Gen X is kind of like, you yeah, you're, j- you're, you're just like we were. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's just different. It's because they don't know how to use their phones and they have to call their grandkids yeah. up to figure out how to yes. use the phone. And the grandkids, like there's never been a time in history where a grandkid has had so much authority over, oh, that's so true. over their parents and their grandparents. Their grandparents. Mm-hmm. And so we've been taught to respect our elders. And you're, uh, here you are calling up, you know, your 25-year-old granddaughter or whoever. Yeah. And you're asking, like, how do I get back into my Facebook? Uh, my Facebook. <laughs> how that's do I what get they're in? on. <laughs> and they're like, why, why aren't there typewriters anymore? You kids these days. Uh, and then the minute that one of, a millennial does something, like, damn millennials. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I think the, um, the hate towards your generation is just because some 75-year-old man can't get into Facebook <laughs> right. or open his phone. So You're not wrong. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. That's my thought on that. I love it. Well, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time with you, yeah. but I got to tell you, this this has been a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Uh, I've asked you a lot of questions about your products. Is there, is there um, is anything you need to ask me about bourbon to, you know, to help you oh in, your, in your quest to, to learn more and not have any more of those wild turkey nights? Oh, gosh. Um, let's see. I really like the flavor of this. But mm-hmm. I feel like the spice on the end is almost a little more than I'm... I bet a drop of water would probably help you. I, I actually was thinking of like an ice or a water. Like, I bet uh, that would be like... Now he doesn't have completely. anything to throw at now me. Now he can't throw anything. All right, let's see. Yep. Because it's, it's that taste of this. I'm still not over the banana thing that's happening. There you go. It's that, totally that, blowing my mind. That cut it down. Let's see. I'll do it too. Also, because I'm such a like Kentucky girl, I'm like... Ugh. I know. And then it's good. Well, but, <laughs> and I was like, dang it. <laughs> but Jack Daniels is owned by a Kentucky company. Okay, see? Okay, I feel a little better. I'm pretty like... Uh, All right, let, we added some water here. Let's, let's get the results. Drum roll. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. It totally evens that out. It was just that very like last little note that hits on the back, and it kind of... Awesome. Yeah, I love that a lot. Well, tell us where we can find your music. What what new do you have coming out? Yeah, so I actually just released a song called Friends Like These like a couple weeks ago. So we're really promoting that right now. And it's on Sirius XM The Highway. Um, it's on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere that you listen to music, Amazon, any of those streaming services. It's out everywhere. And we're working on a lyric video now and a music video that will come later oh, cool. and all kinds of really fun stuff. I'm also um, just started making a food vlog. So oh, nice. I'm doing it while I'm while I'm out on tour. I was on tour with Gavin DeGraw. And nice. uh, and so like I said, I'm really passionate about food and so I started vlogging everywhere I would go and eat and the different foods that were either popular in the cities mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. recommended by the locals and it's it's been a lot of fun. So I've just started kind of putting that out. So Awesome. Mm-hmm. Way to go. Thank you. I'm a busy Chase girl. It. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it today. I mean That's right. It's all about delivering content to content. the people. Content. So. I made a joke the other day. I was like, I want to know, because I was like, oh, we got to do content for this, and then we got to do this photo for content. And I was like, I'd just love to know how many times Dolly Parton ever used the word content. Yeah. I was like, probably zero. You know, but if <laughs> she did. A, there's a millennial word right there. It, but if she did, she would have written a song about it. I'm sure she would have. And somebody would have broken her heart on the yeah. way to the content. Right. Exactly. <laughs> They'd have been like, why? Why did I have oh. to do the content? <laughs> and you broke my heart. Oh, it's so true. So good. Well, I want to raise a glass to you and your Thank rise you. you're a rising star Thank you so in much. this in this world of country music. And, and it's so glad to have you on the Fred Minnick show brought to you by the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. So Thank you so much. And and you know what? Let's go grab a bite together and do that for Yes. Food. Do that um, food I would love for you day. to be on the vlog. That'd be so fun. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>